Hey, this is Christian and today I want to share with you a few steps uh, that will help you become a web developer in 2021. Obviously this year is fucked, so probably it's gonna help you for next year, but these steps are more like principles that you should be following. And these are principles that I saw working in my coaching program and I saw working for myself in other areas of my life, but this will be more tailored to coding rather than uh, any other kind of ventures that you want to get in let's get started the first thing is that you need some sort of plan okay i see that many people have difficulties with finding time okay i need to find time to code i need to find time to build projects i need to find time to learn but when you when people say that i know that most people say you shouldn't find time you should make time the problem there is that if you don't have some sort of plan, some sort of things to look forward to every single day when you get home after work, then you'll start procrastinating and you'll start to browse the internet, scatter the internet to find something to work on, okay? So that's why people don't have time. That's why people have to find time. And another thing that I've noticed is that if you are just procrastinating and if you are trying to find things to do, you'll never actually fall in love with work, okay? So that's kind of the second thing that I want to bring to your awareness is the fact that you have to love what you're doing. Otherwise, you'll never actually do the work, you know, because if, if the thing that you are doing requires effort, you'll never be able to give it your best, okay? We have this idea in, your, in our minds, and I recently got rid of it, that we have to work hard to get great results. But in reality, if you look around you at the most successful developers, I guess, if we are talking about that, or most successful entrepreneurs, they always say that they never work. They actually love the work that they are doing, right? So one of the secrets to success, if you want to become a good developer, is to actually love what you're doing. And to fall in love with what you're doing, you have to work on, on something instead of trying to find things to work on okay you'll also find yourself working for many 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 hours even if you don't have the time right you'll be coding in your uh, while you're on on the toilet seat while you are commuting you'll always be working okay because work in web development doesn't necessarily mean that you have to actively be in front of a keyboard typing code okay it's not about that that's something very shallow and that's something that people that are working with their hands and with their back think that should be hard work in reality hard work is is it's not something that you should be chasing because i'll tell you people that work at mcdonald's they're hard workers but they are can, they can barely uh <laughs> buy a sandwich for themselves from their workplace okay this is something that you have to keep in mind so action plan you have to love your work. Three, you should be surrounded by people that are going in the same direction as you, okay? Um, now I know that you might be in a bunch of forums and communities, uh, probably on Reddit, on Facebook, maybe on LinkedIn groups or whatever, maybe Slack communities, maybe you're on Discord, but those things are, they, they look nice, but maybe you've tried to get into some group project with some of those people and nothing really worked out and the reason why nothing really worked out is because you don't have a leader okay groups are fine but if a group doesn't have a leader the group is gonna break really really quick so that's why you need some sort of uh, leadership when it comes to uh, joining a group that's why i invite you to join my facebook group where i go live every sunday okay quick plug in there the link is in the description and that's where I answer questions and that's where some of the people that are in my program are coming up and they are asking questions so you can spy on us you can come in and bring your own questions so you can learn faster okay there is no reason to join random groups on different platforms where all people are noobs and they are all doing their own thing and they are all like sharing random resources that they have no idea if they work or not okay everything is a uh, guesswork and you are just using and using your time in a bad way now so so far action action map step by step plan right love group force another thing that i would say is to focus on the technologies that actually matter right experience versus exposure i think i talked about this in a previous video well what that means is instead of trying to learn everything like you probably want to or 
like you probably think you have to, you should learn just two, maybe three things, okay? I see this quite a lot with bootcamp grads, okay? They are all super hyped up uh, that they've, they've learned all these amazing technologies from, from the back end with Node.js, Express, MongoDB or MySQL or maybe Python and Flask or whatever. And they go all the way to the front end with React, Redux and TypeScript. But if you look at them, uh, their biggest project was, was some dog search app that has like one page and it's been built in one or two weeks, okay? If you look into the real world, you'll never work on an application for one or two weeks. You'll work on an application for one or two years. So you kind of have to replicate that if you really want to get the experience because otherwise you'll just get exposure to a bunch of little pieces of the puzzle and it's like looking at the sky. You'll be looking at the sky at night and you see like a bunch of stars but you cannot connect them to create the constellations, okay? There is also a bunch of clouds covering those stars and you won't be able to accurately pinpoint them. So you'll never know actually what is really important for you and what is just fluff, okay? Because most of the time there is just fluff. For example, in my program, I don't even, I only teach maybe two or three hooks and I think there are maybe seven or ten hooks if you are learning React you know what I'm talking about. The reason why I'm not teaching those is because they are not being used or if they are being used they are being used so few times that it's pretty much uh, a waste of time to teach those kind of things. So I always focus on learning the basics okay when you are really good at the basics you can do pretty much anything okay you want to throw a punch 1000 times you know how to throw it properly rather than throwing a punch 100 times, kicking 100 times, etc., etc. That's how you build that uh, creativity. Next point, stop being creative, okay? You don't need to be creative in the beginning. I see a bunch of like influencers saying that you should be coming up with a project idea, something that you love, something that you are passionate about. While in theory, that sounds like a great idea and it, it makes sense, right? Find something that you would like to work on so you can put all your time in, right? It makes sense. But that's something that you want to do after you learn code, after you get a job. Until that moment, you should be building things that will guarantee you a job, okay? You should be building applications that you will be building anyway at work. So that's gonna be easy. That's gonna make it easier for you to get hired rather than spending literally weeks or months trying to come up with a project. Why not have one project or maybe two projects, okay, that you can actually build? And again, you can see these projects being built if you are joining the, joining the Facebook group. Why not just build those two projects that are gonna guarantee you success pretty much, okay? And the reason why I'm saying there are just two projects that you should be building to guarantee you success is because I've been working as a developer for the past five years and pretty much all the projects that I've been working on were pretty much the same, okay? They were almost identical, okay? So that's why it was easy for me to go from 24 grand in London, then 35 grand, then 50, then 60, then 80. It's because all the projects that I've been working on were the same, it's just the pay was different and the scale and the company that I was working on was different and they were willing to pay more. So these are a few things that I wanted to share with you today. And the way I'm making these videos is I'm making them like I would tell myself five years ago what to do, you know. So I'm trying to give you as much value as I can through this, um, through this lens in this YouTube video because I hope that if you just watch these videos, you'll become a developer, okay? And probably if you feel like you got enough value out of this, you'll try to reciprocate, re reciprocate and uh, become one of my clients and give back to the channel so I can put more, okay? If you don't wanna do that, that's fine. But there's, there should be enough value on this YouTube channel to actually help you become a developer anyway. What I'm asking you to do is to like this video, subscribe, I'll leave a comment so you can help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to join in the Facebook group where I go live every weekend so you can ask me questions there directly. Also, if you want to work with me directly, uh, there is a link in the description. If you feel like these things that I've just told you make sense and the things that I've been talking about for the past, I don't know, year or so make sense, why not get some help to fix this? If you're not ready, I understand. But when you're ready, the link is in the description. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.